Hello, Chart Watchers and Decision Point Faithful. Welcome to this Monday, May 24th episode of Decision Point. My name is Aaron Swenlin from DecisionPoint.com, and I'm here with my father, Carl Swenlin. We want to get you prepared for the week ahead. We have lots of charts to look at. Dad, how's everything going so far? Pretty good. All right, excellent. Yeah, it should be. It's pretty much a, a nice day in the market, so I think everybody's in a pretty good mood for now. Well, we're going to go ahead and take a pretty good look at the SPY and do our indicator overview. Carl's going to take that. And then I'm going to cover semiconductors and software. Um, those two areas are looking very strong. They were looking strong last Friday when I uh, had my diamond mine trading room. We pretty much decided on Friday, last Friday, that these were the two industry groups to watch going into this week. And sure enough, we're seeing some really great uh, upside movement in those areas. But how long will that last? We'll have to take a look at those charts. And then I have three diamonds of the week for you. I think that these ones are gonna be pretty good. Um, there are a lot, a lot of them to choose from now. Last week, it was very difficult to choose. We were in a pretty volatile, not so good looking place in the market. So we're looking at some pretty good choices this week for our diamonds of the week. Let's go ahead and get started here and take a peek. I did wanna let everybody know that viewers of our Decision Point show, we are offering 50% off your first month uh, use the coupon code SAVE50, and that will get you half off your first month of any of our Decision Point blogs and reports. So come take a look at decisionpoint.com. And then I did also want to let everybody know that Arthur Hill is going to be joining me on June 7th in the DP Free Trading Room. So if you'd like to join Arthur and I on June 7th, just go to our homepage and you'll see the ad for the free Decision Point Trading Room. Click on that and you will get registered for this recurring Monday webinar. It is Monday, noon Eastern time, every Monday, including Memorial Day. I will be holding our free trading room on Monday. So if you're off and you wanna take a look at what we do in that free DP trading room, Go ahead and sign up and we will see you on Monday. So far, our Decision Point Sector Scoreboard, we're still looking at buy signals in the intermediate and longer term. So these are your silver crosses, all of these buys, and this is your golden cross, all of them on a buy. So 5,200 day positive crossovers, the golden cross, and Let's go back. And the intermediate term trend model is the silver cross where we're looking at 20 and 50 day EMA crossovers. So far, all of these are in buy signals, but we are getting close. Um, technology was very close to getting a neutral signal. And what was the other one, Dad? I know we were watching for. Consumer discretionary. Yes. So those two aggressive growth areas of the market we're starting to look pretty bad as far as getting um, their 20-day EMAs moving below the 50. But right now, with the upturn right now in those growth stocks currently in the market, um, those signals have been avoided. Let's go ahead and look at some charts. I'm going to pass it right to you, Dad, for the overview of the SPY and our indicators right now. Okie doke. All right, today, 1% up day. Notice we have a double bottom here, short-term double bottom. Uh, the upside, minimum upside uh, target would be equal to this from the bottom of this uh, uh, double bottom and to the confirmation line. So that would put the target up somewhere along where this line would be uh, running along out there. Notice today we have contracting volume on SPY and on the S&P 500 total volume. Uh, the VIX broke through the moving average today, but then uh, it did here too. So uh, that's not necessarily a, a, a good signals, particularly with the retraction, uh, you know, the contraction of uh, volume. Now, 
the first chart I always want to look at after the the spy chart is our climax indicators chart. And notice that we don't have any climaxes on here at all. No, nothing is nothing there. And uh, so what did we have on? Uh, yeah, last week, I think we had just the one on Monday. Yeah, I thought, and that was not backed up by this chart. Mm -mm. I think it, it came through on uh, on uh, the NYSC volume ratio, no, that was the S and P five hundred volume ratio. Um, no, it's not there either. So I thought we had one. <laughs> but yeah, it was one. well. It was really close. It was sort of a. Um, it was more on the. So okay, like, here here it is. Here it is. The because we had the reversal midday. Yeah, yeah. It was an upside. Uh, intraday reversal and it was uh, interpreted as a upside initiation climax. The short term indicators. Uh, turning up, but not anything. Yeah, we're still in negative territory. So. Yeah, to write home about. Um, let me put a thumbnail on this one. Okay. Um, Silver Cross turned down today. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, on a, a pretty strong up day. Um, bullish percent. You know, I carry these, uh, carry it with our Silver Cross and Golden Cross because it's uh, based on candlestick, not the candlestick, uh, point and figure, point and figure uh, charts. And they, they are more weird <laughs> than <laughs> regular bar charts, but you know, that, they give us a good indication ahead of time of what's, what's going on right now. Uh, we're still heading down. We did get a, you know, another uptick today, but you know, the trend is down right now. And, uh, and again, that's interesting. The uh, yeah, that top yeah. beneath the signal line, it's a little worrisome, right? Okay, here, here we have the ITVM, ITVM uh, tr still trending down, even though we have uh, basically an uptrend from this low here. Let's go to look at gold. Not doing so much. Um, again, it's not. It's, it's, <laughs> we did it's, get uh, that long-term trend model um, buy signal. Um, right. Uh, it's it's yeah. It has. It did. Would we, we change that on Friday? Yeah. Yes. Um, we do have this rising wedge, so that would imply that we're going to see a correction downside somewhat. It's, at least it's, it should break down out of this. That's the normal expectation. Um, off the top, when you see a wedge that it's going to uh, go, uh, you know, rising wedge is going to break down and then a falling wedge will break up. The dollar. Falling wedges. Right, another falling wedge. Oh, I wanted to just mention, you notice I drew through this, uh, this one wick here. To me, I... I consider that to be an outlier. And I th think this is more in tune with this top, this top, and then everyone this bunch of tops here. Yeah, I totally agree. Okay, the uh, uh, USO coming alive again, but we also have the another rising wedge, much longer term, and uh, wouldn't surprise me if we did break down out of that and have some sort of a correction. Uh, you, oil has been, it's not been too exciting in the last wet since, well, last two and a half months. Bonds, the 20 year bond is uh, again in a trading range here, not very exciting. Don't know it, don't see anything happening there. 
this one was interesting today. The 10 year yield is really curving down here. You see very getting a little accelerated and uh, mm, might be looking for it to go a drop further right now. Notice we have a uh, PMO top below the signal line. Bitcoin, a lot of excitement about what happened with it this weekend. I'm not sure. I, I don't think that any weekend or, you know, outside of our normal trading hours, I don't think it'll show up on this chart. And uh, the excitement we had was uh, early last week and that hit the low. That was, you know, officially uh, almost a 55% drop from the high. And, uh, you know, you look at this top, this doesn't, this looks ominous. I'm not going to say that I, I can't, predictive necessarily about it, but it doesn't look good at this point. But, you know, here we had a, a parabolic upswing and it corrected down about 30%, another parabolic upswing, another 30%. This was the tail end of what you could draw it as on the parabolic and parabolic. And it was pretty much the same angle as, as these two. And it corrected down 20%. Uh, Good news, but no, it didn't really go too much higher than the prior high. So once it broke down, there's your rising wedge, broke down through that, snapped back, and it's dropping like a rock. Uh, today it was up uh, almost 13% and trying to make a bottom on the PMO. This is a chart that we talked about last week in, in one of the blogs. And this is the relative strength of gold to Bitcoin. And uh, basically, this is an encouraging formation here. It's a, a nice rounding bottom, as opposed to a spike bottom like this, which can be, you know, can fail in the longer term. But uh, that this was still a good rally that they had out of that. But anyway, I put the gold ch chart and the Bitcoin chart, and you can see it's not so much that this relative strength of gold is rising because gold is is uh, especially strong, although it is uh, in an up uh, trend here in the last two, week or two. Uh, mainly, it, the, this relative strength is based on how good or bad Bitcoin is doing. Yeah, it is. It's almost an inverse. Right. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's encouraging, at least to somebody like me that wishes what Bitcoin would, would uh, go away and we could wait for the next shiny object. But I'm afraid that we've got uh, a while to go with Bitcoin and uh, the, the, the uh, cryptos and the problem is that, uh, um, you know, I, I can remember that, you know, stock charts has a list of um, about 150. Uh, this reminds me of the um, dot com binge when, you know, every dot com uh, was just going to the roof in 2000. And then that that was went bust. And so we've got a lot of cryptos out there. There's not going to be very many left when it's, when all this is over, whenever it is over. But uh, I have accepted the fact that uh, we'll probably crypto is going to stay with us in some form or other that will be more stable than what we're looking at right now. And I think I have Covered it. You covered it, yes. <laughs> All right, well, let's get into semiconductors and software. So last week uh, on Friday, when I did the Diamond Mine Trading Room for my GP Diamond subscribers, we were looking at what sector and industry groups to um, look for doing well. <clears throat> it became very clear when we looked at an RRG, when we were um, looking at the formations on the chart that honestly technology was the uh, at the forefront of turning it around 
uh, and setting up for a pretty nice rally this week. Uh, you know, I have been pretty much not excited about technology. It leads the market, which is a good thing, but not so much a good thing when we're experiencing volatility like this. Uh, I've really not been looking in the technology area for any of my diamonds, but this week it was very clear with the double bottom pattern here with uh, the move above the confirmation line, the PMO was turning back around and you have these rising bottoms on the OBV coming out of this double bottom. I still like technology. We have very low participation numbers still, but everything is trending higher. So I think that's good. Um, the problem becomes in the, um, in the longer term, intermediate to longer term. And that really is clear when you look at the Golden Cross and the downside crossover, the very overbought reading here on the uh, Golden Cross index for technology for XLK. So there is some underlying problems in the intermediate to longer term. But in the shorter term, I really like the way this chart has been shaping up. The Silver Cross is turning back up. And again, we have some pretty good participation numbers, um, even the lower ones, but we're seeing a, an increase here to the upside. I'm a little bit concerned we got a tick downward though on a big move to the upside here on technology. But overall, I'm looking for technology to um, at least get up here and start trying to test some of these all-time highs that it had. But I really, I would caveat this with saying that it would be a very short-term um, move. I mean, I, I believe we're gonna continue to see the market going up here in the short term, but underneath the surface, as you were looking down at those indicators, intermediate term is still really wishy-washy. Everything is kind of pointed downward. We don't have um, a lot of oversold readings. So I think the intermediate term is still not good for the market in general, which means that's not gonna be good for technology. But in the shorter term, I like what I'm seeing. Before um, you go, yes, <laughs> uh, I just wanted to point out the uh, moving averages uh, the, the, yes. on uh, technology. Let's see how close we came to a crossover and switching to a neutral on that. Right. That the, 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 this is the great thing about exponential averages is they always move towards price. And uh, so you can't get some weird uh, fat number dropping off the edge of the, you know, of the calculation as you do with simple moving averages, which can affect uh, t today's movement uh, of the moving average in a weird way. They always follow what price is doing. And, uh, and so when it was down here, uh, down below uh, the last, last middle of the last week, I guess it would have been Monday, Wednesday, you know, I was looking pretty much like it was going to change, but it didn't. No, no. Well, we had that big giant rally that came through for us on that second right. bottom. So, um, yeah, I mean, RSI is getting positive, PMO is turning up. I mean, I really think technology in the shorter term uh, looks pretty good right now. That's a short term double bottom. So. Yes, exactly. Everything short term. <laughs> sure. I, like I said, I don't like the intermediate term in the market. And if I don't like it in the market, I'm not going to like it in technology because technology does tend to lead the market. Whatever way technology is going is likely where the market is going to go and vice versa. So if I'm not liking the market, I'm not liking technology. But right now in the very short term, I like the market. Um, and so I like technology, which brings us to semiconductors and software. So I'm going to go into our ETF tracker here. And let's start with semiconductors. So um, what I would be looking at right now with semiconductors, I really like the breakout that we saw from this declining trend that had just happened Thursday and into Friday, we got a little bit of a pullback which was excellent, pulled us right back to the 20 day EMA. And today it's really just bounced, you know, strongly off of that 20 day EMA. But we still, you know, as far as overhead resistance goes, there's still a little bit right here when you look at these tops and this bottom, 
that it hasn't quite gotten through. We may want to, you know, we may see a little bit of a pullback tomorrow, but ultimately I would be looking for semiconductors to continue higher. And right now, at least with the SOX, S-O-X-X, um, that would be a 6.3% upside move. But there are definitely some, some semiconductors out there that I do like. Software is also looking very strong within the technology space. You can see a nice bounce off that 200 day EMA. And again, the, the pop above the 20 day and now today trading completely above the 50 day EMA. We still do have a little bit of work to do because we have this area short term overhead resistance from that confirmation line of that double top. And then of course we have right here at that double top and above, those are gonna be areas of overhead resistance that are gonna still need to be overcome. But I really like this bottoming formation. I really like these PMOs that are getting ready to either have a crossover to the upside or already have crossed over to the upside. So I think there's certainly some um, good stuff going on under the surface. I'll point out one more that, um, has been piquing my interest and that is airlines. Um, last Tuesday, I, um, I put these out, I put airlines out to my diamond subscribers. We're starting to see some nice movement there. And you know, the PMO, this is the Jets, Global Jets ETF had the positive crossover. And if I add the RSI here, there we go you can see that the RSI is positive and it's managed to stay above that um, net neutral 50 line there. So I think everything is still really lined up nice for airlines. It's still a little bit crazy in here and there's still overhead resistance to overcome. But this is certainly one of the areas that I've been looking at as you know for some possible diamonds of the week, which brings me to, I have three of them today, so we'll get right into this. So here is American Airlines, and this is one of the airlines I do like. Um, we had the breakout here above the confirmation line. It's a little bit of a messy double bottom, but ultimately I, I still would look at it that way. Or you could have looked at it as a um, rising, or an ascending triangle, which is also a bullish formation. We got the breakout, we pulled back to the breakout point which happens to also land it on the 20 day EMA. You can see that the PMO is starting to accelerate higher now on American Airlines. The scooter has been top notch. And you can see that as far as performance goes that the airlines are starting to outperform the S&P slightly here. And if you're looking at an airline, American Airlines is certainly one to consider because it has been outperforming its industry group as well as the S&P. So I'm liking some of the airlines and American Airlines was one that I wanted to bring to the table for you. Two others, this one is CrowdStrike. And this was a diamond last week. And this is in the software space. So it's you know something that I've been looking at obviously. Uh, this was actually a reader request. Uh, I picked it out of the reader request because I thought this one was really lined up well. And you can see that we're getting a nice rally here off of the bounce from that 200 day EMA. We almost have a silver cross, PMOs on the buy signal and today reached positive territory. Certainly volume is coming in. You can see that that OBV is rising nicely. <clears throat> Scooter just entered the hot zone. And then look at the outperformance here of the software group, which we've noted already. And as well, the um, CrowdStrike against the S&P has been doing very well. And of course, if you're gonna find a software company, you wanna find an outperformer. This one is outperforming its industry group as well. So you can see some improvement going on there. So that would have been, um, that is my second diamond of the week. And then this one isn't in an industry group that I covered, but this one garnered a lot of interest last week in our Decision Point Diamond Mine. I had picked it on uh, Wednesday of last week. You can see the top of the stop level was right about here. And the stop was set down here just under $24. When I do DP diamonds, I always put in a stop level. 
Um, just diamonds, I don't follow in a model portfolio. We don't go back to an old diamond until we actually see um, it come back up in a scan and I go to present it again. But I always wanna put a stop level in and I always let you know kind of what my upside target is. And so for QFIN, QFIN 360 Finance, um, it's actually, I don't usually hold through earnings, but this one's looking pretty good going into earnings. I have a few people, uh, subscribers who uh, fill me in on some of the fundamentals since I don't follow that quite so closely. But this one got a lot of interest on Friday, picked it Wednesday, and I think everything's looking good. The question now is, are we going to get above this area of overhead resistance? I believe so. I mean, when you have a PMO looking this strong, when you have that kind of volume coming in, RSI positive, I mean, everything is pointing to this one breaking out. And look at the outperformance of QFIN. First of all, consumer finance, which is what this group is part of, has been outperforming overall in the last two months. But look at the outperformance against the S&P and its group for QFIN. I really like this one. I think this looks pretty good. And uh, full disclosure, I do own this one. I did end up getting this one. The OBV on that mm -hmm. uh, is a little worrisome. Yes, because we got all of this in. And one of the things that you look for are, um, you know, we look for divergences. Uh, and this one is almost close to being a reverse divergence. Am I correct? It is a reverse divergence. Yes. So but, you can you know, see that, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying it's, it's just, it's a, it's a negative uh, point, but uh, you're, you're right. The rest of it looks great. Yeah. So yeah, what we like to do, so just to, to give a little background on a negative or a, a reverse divergence, what we wanna see with the OBV is that, and you can see it here, when you break out, you want price to break out and it, and it didn't. So the OBV broke out, we got all this volume that came in, but it wasn't enough to push um, price to the same level as what we had back here and here. And so that's considered a reverse divergence. You're pouring volume in and you should get the same kind of, um, you should get good price action out of it. At least on the prior top, you know. Exactly, the, exactly. The April top, yeah. All right, and I got one more here. Oh, no, nope, I showed all of the ones that I had for today. I know that one of the semiconductors I looked at this morning in our free trading room was Intuit. And I liked the looks of this one. My only issue with it is it is getting quite overbought and it's had quite the move to the upside. But I know this was a semiconductor that was interesting. And one of the other semiconductors, I believe Micron was in the, in the mix here. No, Micron isn't. But you can see the difference, right? In just the two semiconductors and the difference in those charts. Here's why the group's doing well and what's happening to it, Micron versus its group. It's underperforming. Pretty obvious when you look at the price performance here. And an AMD, which is also one of the pride and joys of the semiconductor index, is also not really performing that well against its industry group. So we need to find semiconductors that are performing a little bit better. And like I said, Intuit looks pretty good, but it is getting to the overbought side. And that are that is was our Diamonds of the Week and the Decision Point Show. Wish you happy trading. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.